Hello there, this is Jeff Erdman, EDS Inc. Shandon, and uh, welcome. We, well, we've got another road trip. Uh, yeah, I'm in a tie. I just got off my services this Sunday, and I have to run to Northern California, pick up some uh, materials for the shop, and uh, no tools this time, but it was an auction, and we'll show you around the uh, uh, site that closed down, stuff that I lost that I wanted, and uh, the stuff that I got. But uh, any, at any rate, uh, it's not a new to you. If you've been watching my videos, uh, we've run up the valley before, and we're going to do it again today. So I'll be running up to uh, Northern California today. I've got about eight hours ahead of me, and uh, probably won't get in there until about 10 o'clock tonight. So that's the reason why I'm splitting out right after my meeting today. Uh, went out, loaded up the truck, threw everything in. When I get to a place up north where I'm going to rest, I'll pull off my dress clothes and get into my work grungies and we'll pick up some materials. Anyway, so uh, thanks for joining me and uh, follow along. There's more of the vineyards around the past Rubbles area, out by the airport, that area. This is where my family, uh, on my mom's side, first uh, settled out in this country. And they passed by this just maybe a mile up. Uh, it's a place called Laura's Vineyard. That's where my great, great, uh, is it great, great, yeah, the great, great grandparents originally settled. That's just up here in that clump of trees right up here and uh, their house used to be here before there was any road or anything there was just kind of a path through here and uh, the people would stop there and they could stay the night folks that uh, have singing and dancing there in the house my great great grandparents were very hospitable folks and They'd uh, have breads and pies and that sort of thing made up for anybody passing by on the road here. And uh, that's just the way it was done back then. Uh, coming up here, it used to be the Meridian Vineyards up here on the left where you, the high powered lines are. And just past, uh, I don't know if you can see the barn up ahead, but on the left, it's a ways away yet. Just past that barn out in the, what's now vineyard, uh, used to be an old uh, house, and uh, that's where my grandfather was born. So that used to be Meridian Vineyards. It's now it's been bought out three or four times since then. I don't even know its name. Maybe it's on that sign right there. Uh, Treasury Wine Estates. So, but they have quite a winery out here now. But right out in this field, just the other side of these high power lines, there used to be a house right up here. And uh, my grandfather was born in that house. So we're uh, heading on Highway 46, heading east. And just up over the hill here, we'll end up uh, probably running into a traffic jam because everybody is heading home from the coast so uh, trying to get back to Fresno and Bakersfield usually uh, the traffic comes to a stop but this little community here is called Whitley Gardens there's uh, less than a thousand folks that live here uh, they have their own water district and uh, they're surrounded by a few wineries mostly uh, dry farming out here uh, as it was back in when I was a boy, and all this was dry farming. Very little irrigated land out here. So, but uh, you can see it panning around a little bit. I don't know if you can see anything or not. Once I get to the top of the hill, I'll pan it out a little bit more and show you some of the scenery around here. Mostly, you can see this is pretty dry ground out here. You can see over on the hills over there, there's some vineyards up over there. Uh, 
some irrigation going on and vineyards right across the highway from me here. So, uh, but this used to all be just barley. All this ground was barley or wheat. Um, some of the bottom land down by the rivers was irrigated for alfalfa, but for the most part, this was all dry farmed out here. Now we're coming up over the hill and heading down towards Shandon, that's where I live, and uh, namesake of EDS Inc. Shandon. So it looks today like maybe we'll make it without too much of a traffic jam, but we'll see. Uh, once we get close to Shandon, the road narrows from four lanes to two lanes. They're uh, trying to put in a four lane all the way out to the where Highway 46 and 41 split off. Uh, and they need it, but uh, on the weekends this road just gets jam-packed with cars. And we'll see as we get up here, we'll probably be sitting here and just crawling along for a little while. Yeah, here it comes. We're stopping now. Okay, we just got past the Shandon uh, exits. It took me well over uh, 30 minutes, and probably about more like uh, about 45 minutes. And now we're up to speed. We're uh, driving about 60 miles an hour. So that just kind of proves my point. If people that just file in into line, uh, there's no reason for them to have to slow down. But the fact that they all want to be in the front, and they keep pushing uh, themselves into the front, causes everybody to stop. And it just proliferates and a problem for traffic because we've got the same amount of cars on the road here but everybody's traveling at 55 60 now because they're not trying to push themselves in front of somebody else and what they do is they take the shortcut through they think it's a shortcut through Shandon and uh, uh, so then they come back up and they have to shove their way back up onto the highway so uh, it just keeps that congestion going so I'm traveling at about 60 miles an hour, and uh, as you can see, the traffic's flowing away from me. So this is only a 55 mile per hour area, but if I drive any slower than this, people goes totally nuts out here. You know, uh, this with this, there's a passing lane up ahead. You'll see them just zoom by me, but uh, yeah, you, you can't drive the speed limit because people just go totally crazy. They'll start passing on the right, they'll pass on the left, all sorts of nifty stuff. So, anyway, I'll check out with you. Okay, this is a little Jack Ranch Cafe. Uh, this is where the James Dean Memorial is. They have a uh, cactus out by that tree on the, this, this tree right here. It's the James Dean Memorial plaque and he was killed right out here where uh, highway 41 and 46 meet he was in a Porsche it was back in 1950 late 1950s I think it was like 59 or something like that and uh, he uh, was killed right where these two roads intercede is traveling like uh, 100 miles an hour or something and at that intersection and plowed into another guy and ended up out in the ditch over in here uh, killed him and his passenger so yep so if you guys don't know who James Dean is uh, watch the movie Giant with Rock Hudson it's an ancient movie but uh, that was one of the last movies James Dean was in is a young and upcoming uh, movie star. Life is cut short right here at this intersection.
Sacramento. This is the best way to travel through Sacramento. With, uh, this early in the morning, you don't have any traffic. Makes it real sweet. time here and uh, the sun's starting to come up. I thought it was a pretty, pretty view of the mountains over there. I wish I could see past the, my vehicle. Unfortunately, you got a mirror and a support member for the hood that's blocking the view of the mountains there. They're really pretty. At any rate, this morning, this is uh, heading up towards Shasta. We've, we're passing by Shasta Lake here, but this just kind of helps you to see uh, the density of the smoke in this area. Uh, it's uh, almost hard to breathe. It's so thick. Uh, it was pretty bad down in Reading as well, but uh, you can see that it's just really, really thick smoke. This just kind of settled down in these trees. I can see uh, if we were up a little bit higher, we might get past it. For some reason, it's settling low. But uh, anyway, kind of reminds me of LA back in the 60s. This real bad smog. <laughs> Uh, it's sad, uh, all these fires, I mean, last year and then this year, uh, just burning California up and the expense and cost of trying to fight those, is, uh, and even the cost of life. We've had uh, some deaths uh, related to these uh, fires uh, this year, which is sad. So, anyway, uh, we're, it looks like we're getting high enough, we're going to pass out of the smoke here. Well, we're going by a little town called Weed here in uh, Northern California. We're not too awfully far from our destination. I think maybe 30, 40, 30 miles or so. Uh, yeah, it's just about 30 miles away uh, to where we're headed, Wairika. Uh, get out of this uh, we're pulling down out of the trees and down onto the uh, flat land again up here uh, it's kind of rolling land up here in northern California and uh, then we'll look for Wairika well we're coming into uh, Wairika, about two and a half miles before our turn, and uh, you can tell it is just totally smoky out here. It's just uh, fortunately, though, it's not hot. It's uh, 65 degrees out, so uh, that makes it uh, more comfortable to work in with all the smoke. It gets really oppressive and once it gets up in around 90s or 100s and it has that smoke, it just is really uncomfortable. So we'll be able to load the truck. I won't over exhaust myself and heat because of the cool temp up here. So that's nice. So uh, we've got uh, We've bought no equipment on this auction. It's all uh, metals and stuff. We got. Uh, I wanted to buy some structural steel, uh, but all those lots uh, went on an aggregate basis. They had ten lots of materials, which I only wanted about three lots of them. Uh, that they were selling aggregate and. Uh, so 
the, the bid went higher for the aggregate for those lots than what I intended to pay. If I can't get it for 25 to 50% off of the uh, retail price, uh, then I don't really want it. Uh, I can do better locally. So uh, at any rate, so I didn't get those any of those lots. One man bought all 10, or one company bought all 10 lots, $500 per lot. And some lots were worth quite a bit more than that. And some lots were worth quite a bit less than that. One, uh, one of the uh, lots that I bid on, or was planning on getting, was, would uh, have gone quite a bit less than that if you were to buy it. Uh, and then there were some, there were tools there too, and other equipment that uh, was on sale, and a lot of that went for almost what it would cost you retail. So the the auction wasn't really uh, one that would have benefited me, but I did get three lots, and so here I am. And uh, the one thing that I did get that is going to be beneficial for the shop is. Uh, some uh, ducting for our uh, air, uh, our uh, dust collection in the shop. So I'll be able to get our dust collection finished with it, which has been something that's been haunting me for quite some time. So, uh, and, and it saved me some money here uh, by getting these materials at, at auction. And then I got some grinding wheels and a few other things. Grinding wheels were a good deal. I got them for 25 bucks. And there's a couple of boxes of them, so uh, that was well worth that. But uh, um, and then I got some uh, just some steel that was uh, round stock for shafts and stuff, and uh, got a halfway decent deal for that. So, but anyway, that's all I'm picking up here. And then we'll be turning around and going back home. Boy, I tell you what, this air is getting to my throat, though. <coughs> it is full of smoke and ash. My goodness. Okay, I'm going to sign out until I get there. So this is the lot that uh, I got here. This will make wonderful uh, ducting for my dust collection system in the shop. So I'm pretty happy with that purchase. Some of the other stuff that I bid on is down this way. We'll look at it in here in a second. This sheeting here, I wanted to pick that up, but I didn't think it was worth $500. <laughs> that was one of the lots that went over $500. And, uh, uh, but I could have used it because it's the same pattern on my building. And uh, that would have been great for the little room that I'm going to use for my dust collection system. But you can see most of these are really short sheets, so it wouldn't have been worth uh, 500 bucks. Uh, but you know, some clown was bidding up that high, so that's the way it goes. Now this was also went all this lot here went for uh, 500 bucks, and I would have paid gladly that much. But since it was an aggregate, um, I didn't think buying that 10 and a few of the other lots that were real small worth it this uh this is what i'd really like to have gotten is this uh, stock here um that's uh i want to build a loft in the shop it would have come with this which i have no use for but uh i'm sure i could have found one <laughs> so but i i would have liked to have got gotten that and that's uh that steel right there if i was to purchase that would probably cost me uh, probably close to a thousand dollars now with the current market maybe a little bit more so that would have been worth the buy uh, but I didn't didn't want to buy all those lots for that much money so anyway so that's the way it goes just give you an overview of the other stuff this was all sold as one lot out here and uh, then over here this is the plant and it's really interesting because they uh, they sold the uh, they they uh, they told me that they built this thing. It took them several years to get it all built up and everything, and uh, they operated for three months and they closed it down. 
So all that money put into it. Most of the equipment's really brand new inside. Uh, so it's, it's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, this company went down right away. Well, here's my haul here. This is uh, uh, ducting that I'm going to be using for our our uh, dust removal from our equipment. Uh, we've got two of these big, long, this is about 12 inches, and uh, then you have some 6 inches back there and 8 inches, eight, eight inches that can go down to the equipment. So, uh, this will be great. This will finish out our our duct work for the dust collection system, which is something that we've needed for a long time. Uh, shop gets way too dusty, and right now I I want to. We're going to be putting our dust collection system outside, and right now it's in the two barrels on the inside, which uh, you know the the uh, uh, it ends up uh, causing us some problem. This is uh, the uh, shafting that I got. Some of this stuff, like this here, is uh, for a roller table, but I can find a use for it. But we got quite a bit of shafting here, so that'll be great for uh, just playing around in the shop. I have plenty of material to to make whatever I want, or if I need to make a shaft, I, I've got the material to do it now uh, for any of my equipment, so that's kind of sweet. And uh, got these two uh, metal racks that went with it there uh, uh, and I think I know exactly how I'm going to set these up in my shop uh, for that material so uh, not a bad little score I wish I would have gotten a steel that uh, I wanted to do, have for my loft but we'll find it someplace else cheaper uh, just have to keep your eyes open I also got some uh, uh, more uh, grinding wheels so that's kind of nice because uh, as you know in one of my other videos I lost all my uh, grinding wheels to a little accident so the when we're looking across the way here that lumber yard is separate from this one uh, the front buildings are part of this but all these back buildings are a whole new lumber yard that never really got off the ground. So uh, that's uh, what enabled me to get some uh, material here. This was all sold as one lot back here. And man, they have a whole bunch of steel here if I'd thought about it. Uh, but I couldn't tell from the pictures that they had what, what they had back here. But there's some uh, uh, steel plate down in here too. Uh, like down in here, they got some steel plate. Uh, they could have been used uh, real efficiently in the welding shop. And uh, my wood shop guys want me to build a press for his uh, press in the wood doors. So uh, that would have come in handy there too. But anyway, didn't see this, so we'll just have to deal with it. There was a couple hydraulic shafts over there that would have helped me to build uh, a, uh, uh, I mean hydraulic rams that would have helped me to build a, a press. So, but we'll do that another time. Well, I'm gonna sign out here. Truck is loaded, it's tied down, and I'm ready to go home. So it's about 10:30, 11 o'clock, uh, and uh, I've got uh, about an eight, nine hour ride home. So I want to get myself moving. high school curriculum and we're also doing it in middle schools to help young people really understand okay. look hey there's a hard quick get it so this is uh jeff erdman eds inc uh thanks for coming along with me we had quite a whirlwind of a weekend um, Saturday we uh, were uh, supplying hospitality for a group of people from all over California 
who came down from uh, as far as Reading, as far south as San Diego to uh, learn how to staff uh, construction projects and uh, disaster relief. And uh, these people volunteered their time to come, about 120 folks. And uh, so uh, a big group of us uh, got together and we supplied them with uh, a hospitality for their coming all this way. Ended up with, at the end of the day, with a barbecue. Uh, my son ended up barbecuing about 20 pounds of tri-tip uh, and uh, had a really good time, enjoyed uh, all this volunteer spirit and, and uh, the attitude that came with it. And uh, then uh, the Sunday after my uh, uh, worship uh, service, uh, headed out for Northern California. Uh, left about 4.30. Got back at 10 o'clock Monday night, uh, picked up all this material behind me, and uh, this is going to help with our dust collection system in the shop, and uh, then I got a few other items as well. So, but in general, it's been a whirlwind of a weekend, as always, busy as can be, and uh, I want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on EDS Inc. Shandy.